Hey guys, wanna see a magic trick? folks welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in um, as you saw in the short little clip before the intro we've went ahead and removed the hood off of the truck and that was kind of like the first thing that I uh, needed to get done today because we're gonna go ahead and we're going to remove the fenders on the truck and we're going to remove the front grille support along with the steering column and the steering shaft so we're gonna show you how to do all that stuff um, so it may be just a little jumbled up because Good old Ryan forgot to hit the record button a while ago, so I'm having to go back and re-record some of this so you all can see uh, about some of the stuff that we're doing here. Now, as I've stated before, I have plans that I want to intercool and upgrade your radiator in the project truck. Now, there's a lot of great products out there, but the products that I'm choosing to use is a Mishimoto radiator and a Mishimoto intercooler. A lot of people seem to love them, and they are very tried and true products, so that's what the plan is for the project truck. However, I have run into a snag there. As I was taking apart some of the truck, I went to measure the front grille support and noticed that the measurements don't align with the measurements of the radiator. So I'm gonna take you through that and show you what I found out. Now, as we step over here to the front grille support on the truck, the radiator support is 32 inches. The measurements for a Mishimoto radiator for first gen is 36 inches. So it's four inches too long. Even if you split the difference, you know, we're looking at two inches on each side of the radiator support there. So that whole uh, bracket right here would have to be basically taken out in order to make the radiator fit. Now also to give you guys a idea of some of the dimensions on this radiator, it's 23 inches tall. So we're probably not quite 20 inches so it's going to be a little over three inches higher than your front grill support and also it's six inches deep so that is almost going to put you it's right there with a the fan so as you can see the Mishimoto radiator is not going to work for the first gen at least not the way it is right now. Uh, I did a little research on intercooling first gen Cummins and most of the stuff that I found out there is for intercooling like a 92 and later truck. I mean those trucks were already intercooled from the factory so I am not quite so sure if the grill support is different. Uh, I'm assuming it almost have to be because they make the drop-in applications for 92 and later trucks and they're not meant to put in this 89. The only option that I see available is to get a front grill support from a 92 or later truck. That way, you know, I can get the radiator and we can just drop it in instead of trying to fabricate something up here and we get in the support itself. And like I said, I am not quite sure on the dimensions of a front grill support on a 92 or later truck. It may be a little thinner. Uh, I really don't know. But also looking at the support, drilling holes in it to do the piping is also going to be challenging. Uh, I'll kind of show you here what I'm talking about. As you can see here, the bracing for your front grill support is almost kind of like C-channel. I'm not really even sure what to call that, but you know, your intercooling piping is going to be coming in right around this area somewhere. So this, this is going to be in the way. That could possibly be trimmed down, but again, you know, the radiator support here is not going to allow a bigger radiator. That may be able to be repositioned, but I think the best bet would just to be to get a new front grill support altogether for off of a 92 or later. So with all that out of the way, let's get some work done.
giving you a quick update. Uh, we got the front core support off and I'll show you that bad boy. He's sitting down here on the floor. It wasn't too terribly hard to remove. You just got some uh, bolts up underneath the frame, little small ones. I think they were, I can't remember now, I think they were maybe 5 sixteenths, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger. But they've got those little clip uh, type holders. I highly recommend you soak those down in penetrating oil. I had to get the saws all out a couple times on those. And then on where your bushings go for your grill support there, that was a 11 16 inch nut and a 5 8 inch head bolt. At least that's what it was <laughs> on my truck. So, and we'll show you here. These bad boys came out of there. Oh, pretty crusty. <laughs> they needed, definitely needed to be changed. We got all the fenders off and everything. It wasn't nothing too complicated. For the wiring, I highly recommend that, you know, you do some type of labeling system. Uh, I'll show you this here. Uh, actually, I don't know where that went. It was broke. <laughs> but I just, whenever I disconnect something, uh, I'll put a piece of duct tape on each side and I'll label it like one and one on both of those. So I know one and one goes together, two and two, so on and so forth. So maybe you've got your own little way of however you want to do it, but just keep track of your wiring in case you, it's a while before you get back to it and you forget where they go. <laughs> and on um, our fancy steering column here and steering shaft, we got that about ready to go. I've got all this stuff loosened up. I just kind of wanted to show you a few things before I actually took it out. There's like three, I think there's 17, 7 16 inch nuts there. Make sure you don't loosen those up until you get your steering shaft loosened up. This here was pretty, as you saw, I had the cheater pipe out trying to get those loosened up. And I'm not sure what those Torx head maybe is what they're called. I've got one here. I'll kind of show you. I used a 3 8 inch uh, 12 point socket and it worked and that's a 10 millimeter down here so once you uh, get the shaft off you can loosen up your steering column and pull it on out now one thing I will say like we've already we've taken the fenders off and everything and and it's real easy to get to you don't necessarily have to do that to replace your steering column you probably maybe just have to take out your inner fender wheel to do it um, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Make sure you, you know, use ratchet straps or something to uh, hold your steering wheel in place. You know, you want to tie that puppy down because if not, you take your steering shaft off and you don't align it correctly back, then, uh, then you might be going down the road like, you know, with your steering wheel turned sideways and, and you're driving straight. So um, make sure you do that. Unless you take your steering wheel off, of course, then it makes it a little easier. You can line your steering wheel when you get back, when you get it back together. Now, getting the slave cylinder out wasn't too hard. Um, let's see if I can. You've got like four bolts back up underneath here that you have to remove. Now, I couldn't uh, figure out how to turn it to get it out. That's just a rubber grommet in there I put back in there so I wouldn't lose it. So I ended up disconnecting it at the slave cylinder down under the clutch. Uh, part of the reason I did that is I broke, trying to take the hose off the reservoir, I broke it, so I'm gonna have to replace it anyway. So I just cut the line down there and that's where that's at. <laughs> we are getting closer by the day. Heck yeah. Hey guys, that's going to wrap up the nice video. I hope you found it useful and helpful if you're removing your steering shaft and uh, your steering column and such. So, with that being said, we're getting ever so close to getting everything disconnected so we can get the cab off of here and start to put the floor pans in and address the rest issues underneath the cab and on the frame. So, I think the only thing that we have left to do is just disconnect the brake booster. So, if you... You know, if you're wondering how to do that, stay tuned. There's going to be a video on that. I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to 
take your brake booster off and disconnect your brakes and such. So, And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you soon. Have a good night.